Kwa Mulan is a Chinese language learning game that will one day be really good. But at the moment, it's not ready for public consumption. It's actually in early access and has a lot of things in place to be a really, really cool and great way to create an immersive environment for learning Mandarin Chinese. It's touted as an HSK-1 study tool. If you're unfamiliar with HSK, it's basically a test to tell you your vocabulary level in Chinese. HSK means Han Yu Shui Ping Kao Shi, which roughly translates to Chinese language proficiency test. HSK HSK-1 is the easiest of the group, sitting at about 500 words. The story centers on some sort of time-traveling police force where you're sent back in time to help Hua Mulan. Yes, that Mulan. Ignoring the fact that Mulan is a fictional character and not real, uh, she's actually a legendary folk hero that was created during the Northern Wei period. But yeah, ignore that fact. Oh, and also ignore the fact that you're speaking modern standard Mandarin and Chinese back then was very different sounding. Take a listen. Sgoi don't gelo tra tantra snacks nru don't. Then she, uh, Rugo Alsh, Yanga Yi Shan Lad Jang, Taying Gai Huish Jia Xiang, Rugo Nidang Yung Yiga Tardoha, then she. Okay, so we're gonna ignore that as well. But you're selected to go back in time to help fix the past because I guess some bad guys changed it. But there's one problem. You don't speak Chinese. Oh no! Why, but why wouldn't they just pick someone who did speak Chinese to go back in time? That's, that's silly. But again, we have to ignore a lot of things here. So you do a short lesson on a computer to learn a few words, and then they send you back in time. Just like they would in real life. Here's five words. Good luck, stupid. Now that you know that, at the moment, Hua Mulan is super slow paced, even at HSK1. The first 10 minutes of gameplay, I said maybe five words out loud at most. Hello, goodbye, thank you, you're welcome, and okay. Ni hao, zai jian, xie xie, bu ke qi, hao. That's about it. And you have to repeat them ad nauseum. The missions are simple, but I actually don't hate that. You have to remember, you're playing an educational game, not Spider-Man 2, so it's gonna be a little jank. Did your mom ever buy you, like, educational games for your NES when you were a kid? Yeah, they weren't great. Remember Bible Adventures? <laughs> I talk to villagers and help them. The biggest problem that I really hope is fixed is that the voices are all computer generated. We can help with some translations, but it is on you to learn on the go. But then some of them aren't, I think. A lot of the English also sounds really bad. When you were seven, you scraped your knee wrestling with Kenny Stockto and told your mother fell on your bike. And they even say Mulan's name incorrectly at one point. The name of the game is Hua Mulan, and they're calling her Mu Mulan. Mulan. I don't even remember. No, oh, here, here it is. That's Mulan's family name. Our suspicious character must have been looking for her. Early access, so can't critique too much. Hopefully they'll be able to fix this and find some voice actors at some point, but we really have to suspend a lot of critique on early access games. It's just not fair. I help this guy put out a fire in his house, but then he's still putting it out afterwards. I help this lady find her missing daughter, but she's literally right there. You can actually see her from where you're talking to this lady. My favorite mission though is helping this lady Lady, carry some grain up a hill. I like this mission because it, I unlock a new word, carry, except I never hear anyone say it clearly. And all I get is this character. And if I don't know it already, I didn't really unlock it. T Chinese is tough because I can't look at a character and sound it out. I just have to memorize it. It's not like Korean where you can actually look at the character and sound out the word based on just the sounds. Um, and also with Japanese, you can kind of recognize the hiragana and sound it out with that. Chinese don't work like that, bro. It's, there's the character, there's the sound. Good luck. <laughs> After helping all the villagers, I have to decipher this job posting board. Again, a super clever way to test my reading. I really like this about it. Once I figure out this job board, I'm sent back to the Animus to learn more Chinese. I'm just gonna call it the Animus because that's what they call it in Assassin's Creed, and that's a better name for it than whatever they're calling it in this game. Now that I've figured out where to find Mulan, I'm ready to, I guess, dive back into ancient China, I guess? 
Um, but then, but I have to learn a few more words. But here are the biggest takeaways I found after about the first 20 minutes of playing. The voice recognition works really well. It, I, I don't think I've played a game that it works better at. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing because I could be getting the tones wrong, but for my sake, it works really well. And I think for beginners, it probably works well too. The idea of chatting with villagers and learning simple words is great. It's phenomenal. That's exactly what a Chinese language learning or any language learning game should be because it brings us to immersion, which the immersion is awesome. There's a few caveats here, but I'll talk about that in a second. And then the tasks and jobs that are given are appropriate and useful, at least for what you're doing in the moment. I like everything about that so far. Now let's talk about the bed. Just know that I'm still overlooking a lot of the technical stuff, like the camera switching angles for no reason at all. The mouths not really matching the words. Hard to know. We oversee the passage of time through our timeline. And just the overall jank of the game. Because it's early access, so you gotta give them some leeway here. They're still working on it. The pronunciation of some of the words is off-putting, almost upsetting. Ask him if he's seen anything suspicious. Hmm, kind of nosy. Well, <laughs> uh, There's just some things that aren't said correctly, and it. It, I, I worry that it's gonna teach people like the wrong thing. Another thing is I learn and hear a lot of words that aren't very useful to me as a language learner. She says raiders came and destroyed everything. Someone who is studying HSK1 doesn't need to know words like snow leopard or warlord or things of that nature. I wish the language was just more simple. Like if you speak a second language but you're not very good at it, oh hey that's me with Chinese, and you talk to somebody who's fluent in their language, they adjust the language to fit you. Think of any time you've ever met someone who's an English language learner. Now remember we do this subconsciously, is we change the way we talk to people who don't speak our language. Uh, we slow it down, we use simpler terms. You have Christmas in France? Christmas. We don't use as many colloquialisms than we would if we were talking to someone who was born and raised in the uh, United States and speaks fluent English. It's just something we do. I also wish I had the ability to turn off the lady who's translating everything in my ear. Because oftentimes the translation isn't even correct, but it's rather like a summary of what she said. You found the missing girl. Tell her to follow you and then take her back to her mother. She's happy you found her child. And I know that, you know, this is targeted to, to HSK1 users, so they're not going to know much anyway. And I also know that Chinese can't always translate word for word, but Chinglish would be good and it helps English speakers learn Chinese. Chinglish is a fusion of Chinese, Zhongwen, and English, Yingwen. It's a blend of the two languages. Chinglish is often emerging when a Chinese speaker uses English words or phrases in a Chinese context. It's not strictly correct English, nor pure Chinese. It's a good way to help you understand Chinese language and culture. Chinglish can provide very valuable insight into the thought process and linguistic pattern of the native Chinese speaker. By understanding Chinglish expressions, English speakers can have a better understanding about how Chinese speakers integrate and interpret English vocabularies into the daily conversation. How long time no see. People mountain, people see. I hope this kind of Chinglish can help you have a better understanding about Chinese language and culture. That being said, I think you should also be able to adjust the amount of words that are practiced. Like, I, I know this is an HSK1 game, but you could easily make it a game for all levels by adjusting like, instead of the first five words, give me like 50 words that I have to use throughout the thing. Saying the same five words over and over and over again is very tedious. And I know, repetition is important, but I feel like this isn't the appropriate focus. I get why they do it, and maybe because I'm 
a, a few levels above HSK1, it seems more tedious than it is, but I also still think 10 minutes with five words is a little too easy. It's not spaced repetition-y enough for me. But overall, I really do think that this game has a bright future ahead of it, and it will be very useful after a few updates. Sadly, I cannot recommend this to anyone at this time as it has only about an hour of content but i can definitely see where it's going and i like where it's going my name is ari with fit pro vr don't forget to get your language learning chinese workout brain in today i don't know